You, a technomancer, right? Get the hell out of here. You surge around here, you're gonna fuck up my baby for good. Ah, uh, just like you don't spontaneously combust, we don't spontaneously search. Is that you on the poster? Yeah, name's Amelia Reacher. We're discoverers one and all, like father, like daughter. Why? What's it to you? Well, me and my men need to get to a site on one of Aurora's shadow paths. Heard you'd make that happen. Wish they gave me a heads up a Mancer was coming along. But orders are orders. I can take you whenever you're ready. Your first rover trip? Yeah, first time this far from Ophir. Nice! How's it feel? Exciting, I guess. A little terrifying to go this far without having the protection of a shadow path, but life's about the adventure, isn't it? Took the words out of my mouth. That's why I love my job so much. Life's too damn short to play it safe. You guys doing okay? Nervous about the fights we're gonna face? The fights? What fights? I did not leave my home and laboratory to foray into battle, child. Did someone tell me this? Because I don't recall being... We needed a doctor with us, Scott. I just... I... Yes, I understand that. I do. But you know, fighting is... It's a dangerous... People get hurt, and I... I guess that's why... I mean, of course, I will care for you. But no fighting means no wounds to you. Yeah, I, I can't lie. Yeah, it scares me. How big's the fight we're looking at? Aurora's troops and Technomancers. We'll have to be tactical about it. Hit them in small groups, since there's not a lot of us. But we stick to that plan, and we should be fine. Sure, yeah. I I'm sure once we get there, and we get to doing and not just thinking, I I'll be fine. It's the thinking that wreaks havoc on me. This ain't my first rodeo, Lieutenant. Being on a rover is pretty neat and all, but still, no different from past missions. Hit an enemy, get hit back. Find ourselves down deep in shit creek and then wait for backup. In other words, it always goes tits up. But when you've been in the bad long enough, you get used to it. Did you just call my baby pretty neat? That's it? Pretty neat? I mean, I didn't mean it's swell. Real swell. Holy shit. I think you guys plucked this fucker from the farm before he was ripe. A technomancer from abundance. And I heard you were all nearly extinct. What are you doing here? What do you want? I want to come in, and you're gonna help me. No, I don't think I am. Stop! I'll help you! I told you you would. Don't know why you didn't believe me. Here I come. Well, it looks like we found the relic. Doesn't look like much, but the style of writing looks familiar. Even if I don't have a clue what it means. You able to decipher it? What is it? Is it even real? We haven't been able to decipher it yet, but yes, no doubt it's real. Not sure if I can tell you anything else about it. I don't know what you're planning to do with it, and I don't want to offend you by talking about sacred matters, but you know some knowledge should only stay among technomancers, right? So be careful, please. I know what I'm doing. There's a ton of different chemicals. They must have been using them to make explosives to help out with the drilling. Guess it'd work for me too. One charge should be big enough to close the tunnel down. Just mix it all together, attach it to a single detonator, and bam, gonna be a beautiful thing. What's going on? The Aurora men locked them up to dig. But the tunnels have killed many of them, and they do not want to die. They will never go back to the city. They will die of thirst, or be burnt by the eye of father, son. They know they are only beasts, but if the man frees them, they will not help the Aurora man dig, and they will run away. They will not die. They will remember the Hammer Man forever. Here's your way out. I don't know where you're gonna go, but you better get going. They will never forget the Hammer Man. Never. They thank him. Tunnel's gone. Aurora's got no way into Ophir anymore. <laughs> Mission accomplished. The intensity of the vibrations is soothing, hypnotic. They make me so tired. Dear old Scott, my machine's caressing you with rumbles. Sweet talking yet. Can't go falling asleep on a battlefield, though.
Thanks to you, the city won't ever have to face another attack like the last. All those people wounded because of those broken shutters. Just thinking about it, I feel nauseous. It's probably the rover. Gotta get used to the vibrations. Most people fucking puke their ass out their first time. No, I meant the thought of all the... Never mind. I really don't get it. This is war, right? Aurora shows up and blows up part of our city, and how do we retaliate? Send a handful of people like us? I don't get it. You ever do anything but bitch? Uh, successful mission. Tripping a rover. Hell, if I was you, I'd be grinning ear to ear. Why don't you do that? Bitch less, smile more. Answer? I've got, uh, something to ask you. What can I do for you? I... Well, I don't know if you know, but my dad died when I was young. Actually, he disappeared. He never came back from one of his explorations 15 years ago. I'm sorry. I didn't know. Yeah, I don't want your pity, okay? It's not about that. What I mean is, I've never managed to find out what kind of mission he was on and where he had gone. I know he was close to Scott. He was probably even his best friend. That old crazy man doesn't want to tell me anything. He says he wants to protect me. Look, I'll just cut to the point. I was wondering if you'd maybe look in his dispensary for me. See if you could find any of my father's notes or letters or... I don't know, Amelia. Scott's like a father to me. And besides, you know he's almost always there. How would I even do it? I'm not asking you to break in or steal nothing. Just keep him busy. And while you are there, you know, just flip through files. I'm sure he kept letters between him and my dad. He's not one to throw anything away. All right. I'll try to make him leave, but if I don't find anything... Yeah, yeah, I won't blame you. But I know that you're going to find something. Hello, Scott. My captain told me that she wanted to see you. Is it related to you? Are you sick? Uh, no. Not that I know of. She didn't tell me why. Oh, I... Well, should I take my pouch then? It's an important question. I should still take it, though, but it's a little heavy. All, all right, I'm leaving without it. Hello, Mancer. Hello. I found some of your father's letters. I knew it. Tell me. Most of the correspondence was friendly. They were very close. However, there was some tension between them over time. Some letters gloss over an expedition that they had done together. But what surprised me the most is when your father talks about a boy who was actually Scott's son. The last letter I found is a bit bizarre. I didn't really understand what he meant. What did he mean? Do you remember? Your dad begged Scott to stop the madness, warning that his wife's divorce was only the beginning of what he would lose if he couldn't face the truth. That it was too late for his son. He seemed to think Scott was on the verge of self-destruction. It's true that it's rather mysterious. Scott, a son. Did you know? No. He never told me about him. He obviously lost him. No doubt it's still a touchy subject. We have to find out what this is all about. You have to ask his wife. Did my father really mean to interfere in his family drama? Maybe that's why he disappeared? Please, Zechariah! I'm sorry, Dip. You Angela Seeker, Scott's wife? Ex-wife. <laughs> what did the drunk do this time? Nothing bad. He's a friend. A friend? Ah. Uh, right. Just looking for some information on one of his friends. Mark. And your son. Get out. Get out! What right do you have coming around digging up the past? I'm not here to make you relive your pain. And I'm sorry if that's what it looks like, but I'm here for Mark's daughter. She sent me to try to figure out what happened to her father. The poor girl. Hard enough to lose things when you're old enough to understand. She was just a girl when Mark disappeared. If resurrecting my pain can help ease hers. I loved our son. Scott did too. But he was never around. He was too lost in his research. Lost in the dream of making the discovery of the century. Of becoming a hero in abundance. Then, one day... Our son started to show signs of mutation. When Scott noticed them, he lost it. He tried to hide him as he desperately dove back into his research to find a cure. 
With Scott gone all the time, I turned to Mark for a shoulder to cry on. Told him what was going on. So Mark tried to reason with Scott. But you could never reason with him. He always thought he knew more. Then our son was arrested and Scott and Mark just took off on some crazy expedition. Left me alone to deal with it all. So I filed for divorce. <laughs> I was alone anyway. Then they came back with nothing to show for all the damn time they were gone. But that didn't stop Scott. No, he just dove deeper into his work. And when Mark disappeared, I was sure it was because of another one of Scott's crazy missions. So tell Amelia, it was Scott's incessant need to be right. To be a hero that undoubtedly cost her father his life. And that's it. That's all I know. Hello. I talked to Scott's ex-wife. So? What did she say? It's an awful story. Her son. Anyway, their son was struck by mutation. They took him away from them, of course, but it made Scott go crazy. And he was convinced that he could find a remedy. He asked for your father's help. So they left together and were gone for a long time. Their exploration apparently didn't lead to anything concrete for the boy, and Scott descended into madness. And then one day, Mark left. His ex thinks that it was to bring back something useful for his research, and he never came back. Shit. So my father's disappearance is related to that poor kid? It's really awful what they must have gone through. That explains a lot about why he's so crazy, and also why he behaves as if we were his kids. Thank you, Zack. That doesn't answer all my questions, far from it. But I have a better grasp of what happened. My father disappeared by helping his best friend, who was going through a rough patch and wanted to heal his child. It's a sad but beautiful story, isn't it? I'm gonna... I'm gonna think about all this. Thank you again. Do you know Captain Lisa? What a woman. Nothing gets by her, too old-fashioned and boring. She doesn't laugh often, but at least she's fair. She's your captain, right? Believe me, it could have been worse. Did you get to meet Colonel Victor? Yeah, once, during a medal ceremony. Not exactly an open book, but I doubt anyone questions his die-hard patriotism. Why are you asking? He came to talk to me. I wonder what he has in mind. Is he freaking you out? You one of those people who are afraid of being watched? Don't be. He was most likely just interested in an officer with high prospects. If you're clean, you've got no reason to be worried, right? Do you know Colonel Manser? The one whom your colleagues call Great Master? Sounds a little cultish, huh? I've seen him a couple times. That old man looks nice, but beyond that... I don't know. Ain't easy to figure you out. You technomancers are always by yourselves. You probably know him better than me. What do you know about the Vori? That they're a bunch of assholes. They're behind all the shit going on around the city. Extortion, forced prostitution, corruption. The worst stuff out there, I bet you there's a Vori behind it. If I were you, I wouldn't get close to those guys. It's the best way to end up completely corrupt or completely dead. You travel a lot. You must know the merchants well, no? Well, actually, not really. I sometimes see a few of them on remote roads. Those guys crisscross the planet, and not only the shadow paths. They use sand sails, which don't give them as much flexibility as a rover. Still pretty smart, though. They don't even seem to mind traveling at night, unlike most corporate folks, because Mars is their landscape. They know it better than most. Ever hear about their secret city? Dunno if that's true. I respect their being free and well-traveled, but I've never had the opportunity to chat with them. And I'm cautious of people who are not loyal to anything. What do you think of Scott? You know him well. Know him well? <laughs> That's an exaggeration. He doesn't actually say much about himself. Most of the time, he's on his own planet, and before he gets back down to Mars... Well, we lose radio communication. He's nice. He regularly checks in to see how I am. He used to bring me gifts when I was young, but he can't help commenting on the chances I take and all. It pisses me off. I like him, but he's not my father, I mean. 
What do you think of Jeff? Uh, he's kind of a simpleton, don't you think? Too much of an ass kisser. I wonder if he's that straightforward. Anyway, he's just a hick trying to get promoted. Can I ask you about David? Well, still shell-shocked by the front. I've seen hundreds of them. He blames the whole planet. He's probably not such a bad guy, but by blaming everybody, he pisses everybody off. I bet you know the slums very well, given it's where your shed is. Well, yeah, and so what? You must know the place better than I do. I know that you used to be a rogue before, despite a few old, unfortunate shacks that collapsed. It hasn't really changed. It's a sort of ant farm where derelicts who can't afford to live elsewhere pile on top of each other. And there's a lot of ants. Can you tell me more about the sheds? You're quite curious. That's where we park, repair, and pamper the rovers. They're under close watch because we can't take any chances with the slums all around. The Vori could sneak in and steal stuff. But we couldn't put them elsewhere anyway. We're not gonna cross the city every time we need to get out. Anyhow, if there's something you should do when you get into my sheds, it's this. When you come in, don't touch anything. Don't get close to the rovers, and if you want something, you ask me. You must have traveled a lot. Could you tell me more about what you discovered? You know, when I'm being sent out to explore, it's for prospecting. I drive around, take samples, map out the area, that kind of thing. I discovered two mines last year. We'll put them into service once we connect them with the shadow paths. Wow, it doesn't sound as exciting now that I think about it. But I don't care. Despite all of this, I can go almost anywhere. I see landscapes that others will never see, and sometimes I stumble across amazing places. I'm not doomed to remain under a shell of metal. You're not like other girls, are you? Is that supposed to be a compliment? Or are you being a wise ass? You took on a tough job. Driving places you don't know, taking soldiers on missions, scouting the front lines. It's easy to do anything when you love what you do. I love not being stuck under a roof. Getting out there, you know? You call it tough, I call it lucky. Exactly why I said you're different. Average person, girl or guy, lives on the safe side. They may not love the city, but they know it. So, they stay there. Life's what you make of it, and I want to make it an adventure. So, if you're looking for some dangerous escapades, I know a girl. Think I may just take her up on that. Zachariah, a pleasure as always. What may I do for you? I've returned, Great Master, with the relic from the Aurora evacuation. It's a tablet filled with text, and I don't have a clue how to decipher it. A glorious day. You have no idea what this means, Zechariah. The language is indeed difficult, and most no longer have the knowledge or ability to understand it. Most, but not me. I will begin deciphering immediately. We will know soon enough the vast wealth of secrets it holds. Sean was certainly right in his appraisal of you. Your worth has already proven to be infinitely valuable. A word of warning, Zachariah. Words spreading about your missions. Things you've been able to accomplish. Filled with troubling details that imply you have a mole in your midst. If there is an ASC spy amongst your ranks, he will not only know our secret, but eventually share it back to his master. We will, in no uncertain terms, be lost. All will be lost. So take care. And take care of it. Sooner rather than later. Thank you for the warning. I assure you, I will get to the root of this. Are you so sure that it's a spy? Indeed. The details of your mission were so specific that they were assuredly gained firsthand. So unless you are spreading the information yourself, who else is left but Captain Eliza and your men? Whoever it is, make sure they see nothing else. Ensure that our secret is kept safe. You already back, Lieutenant Zachariah? Have a moment, Captain. Depends what you need it for. Just want to get to know you better, Captain. I don't usually mix business and pleasure, Lieutenant, but... Ask away, and we'll see which questions I feel like answering. Can I ask about your relationship with ASC? 
Tread carefully, Lieutenant. One might start to wonder the purpose of your questions. But here's my answer. We're all forced to work with them, but it doesn't mean I have to be happy about it. Too much power too quickly leads to arrogance. They're brash and too quick to act. And quite frankly, as they've risen in power, it's no coincidence that the dissenters, deviants, and rebels have risen in numbers. They're a great source of intel, however they get it. I sleep better at night not knowing the means. But I've always thought the army was strength enough, that the ASC was overkill. I trust you won't repeat anything I've said, Lieutenant. I'd hate for both of us to find ourselves enemies of the state over a little frank conversation. My lips are sealed, Captain, and I appreciate your candor and trust more than you know. Lieutenant? I want to know my men better. Tell me a bit about yourself. Oh, great. Show and tell. Yay. What do you do when you're off duty? Nothing special. See my folks, I guess. They ain't getting any younger, so... And I give most of my paycheck to them, because I'm the only one they got left. Your sister died. And I ain't married, so... When I ain't with them, I'm at the bar. Drowning the shitstorm that my life's become. Not exactly a picture-perfect life, but it's mine. And hell, I get paid enough to help them out and buy my own drinks, so... What's there to complain about? What do you think about Jeffrey Hunter? He's a village idiot who thinks he can brown nose his way to a promotion. Fucking reject. And no, he ain't my friend, if you haven't pieced that together. I'm gonna leave you alone. Seems you'd rather be that way anyway. At your command, Lieutenant. I have a second to talk? Yeah, of course. I, I mean, yeah. Like, just you and me, or...? Yeah. Just you and me. I like to know my men. Wow, that's... Uh, yeah, <laughs> that'd be a huge honor, Lieutenant. So what's your life like when you're not on duty? I, I tell you the truth, Lieutenant, not much to tell. I, I try to visit the city, make some friends, you know, because I don't really know too many folks yet. And my whole family's back in Greenhope, which is kind of too far to travel for my leave. And, um, oh yeah, there's also, you know, I try to still do some hunting. Though there's not much more than small critters in the underworks, not a great hobby for the city. You have a good childhood? Oh yeah, you know it, Lieutenant. Really nice growing up, running around in the fields. Father gave me a crossbow, and I spent my time helping the farmers shoot critters hurting their crops. They were good times, Lieutenant, but everybody's got to grow up and move on. There was a lot of hunters in Green Hope, too. Plus, I always dreamed of being a soldier. Mostly, though, because there was a girl back home who loved men in uniform, so... Off I went to the big city to join up. And, you know, since I was a sharpshooter, they signed me up and sent me here. Still not used to it. All the buildings, all the folks, all the concrete. But I'm happy, though. How do you like Dave? You guys get along? Oh, yeah, sure, sure. I mean, he's not always the happiest guy in the world, but... It's probably because he didn't have an easy life. He's always talking about how his life was nothing before 126 and joining the army, and that his family's all he's got. He's kind of bitter, but he's probably got a right to be. I always cheer him up, though, hoping he'll loosen up over time. Lieutenant? I know you're a drinking man, so what do you say we go grab one together? Looks like it's my lucky day. Sure, why the hell not? Lead the way. So why don't you cut the bull and tell me why we're really here? Sure. You've been <coughs> spying on me, Dave. Been reporting everything back to Victor. I don't like rats. That's not all right with me. And what? You think I ever had a choice in the matter? Think I had the option to say no? I don't care. All I know is they got all the intel they wanted on me from one of my own soldiers, and I don't know why. What's your angle, Dave? You bitter you got a manser as your lieutenant? I thought we were past all that. What'd they promise you? Promotion? Better pay? Nothing but a promise they wouldn't hurt my parents. Is that a good enough reason? I don't like the ASC. Don't like what they're doing to Abundance. Don't like what they're doing to me. I don't like the deal they offered, and I don't like I didn't have a choice but to accept it. I ain't got no one but my folks since my sister died. Not that I expect you to shed a tear for me, but... If I gotta choose between them and you... Sorry, brother. You're on the losing end of that. 
If it helps, though, I don't think you're the full prick you were before we had this little chat. In fact, I might even have liked you in another time and place. But you're in deep shit now. And it's shit I don't want to get pulled into with you. I don't want your blood on my hands, David. But I can't let you keep doing what you're doing. So I'm just gonna tell you to get the hell out of Ophir and don't look back. I don't... sure. Yeah, sure. Bye, Lieutenant. Zachariah, a pleasure as always. What may I do for you? I found the mole. David Ward was running lines for the ASC. In these times, spies are everywhere. They used to be like rats, but now bear more resemblance to cockroaches. Should you see one, you can be certain a hundred more reside in the walls, each placed there while their arms were twisted by the ASC. So, what happened with this ward? I couldn't find it in myself to kill him, so I released him and let him run, like a rat. I would assume he's still running and we'll never see him in Ophir again. The full blame cannot be cast on him. There are few who the ASC cannot bend to their will. We'll cross our fingers. Hopefully this soldier is gone for good and does not find himself arrested before he should escape. Lieutenant, I was told Dave Ward has gone AWOL. Any idea where he is? Sorry, Cap. I haven't got the slightest clue. I see. This is bad. I have no choice but to declare him a deserter. I'm afraid there'll be gossip that you can't earn the respect of your men, and the army's reputation will take another hit. Captain, all Aurora tunnels were destroyed. If they're gonna get back into the city, they'll have to come up with another way. I knew you wouldn't let me down, Lieutenant. Find Ryan and get your pay. It was well earned. Mutants are back to work, Captain. Well done, Lieutenant. Now go see Ryan and get paid. I warned you to keep your head down, Lieutenant. I don't know what you did, but Colonel Victor was having you tailed during your missions. And now, he's got a shitload to say about it. And none of it's good. I tried defending you, but the things he's saying? You defuse the rebellion, but in a way that makes you seem pretty pro-mutant. Now, I told you myself. I'd give you a chance to explain, but you better talk quick. In the ASC, there's zero tolerance for mutant sympathy. And if you don't have a different version to tell, Victor's hinting at collateral damage. I don't know what's going on. Someone's trying to bring me down, and they're lying to Victor to do it. Only thing I used to calm the rebellion was a little reason and logic, which the rebels heard. Anything accusing me of anything else is a lie. All right. Fair enough. But you'll have to make your case to him as well. Victor also states you voluntarily jeopardized the lives of the officials you were charged with protecting. Want to explain that? How do I explain something that's not... If I put those officials' lives in more danger, I'd have been risking my men's lives and mine as well. Why would I do that? And the claims that you've been hiding vital intel for the sole benefit of your fellow Technomancers. Like an important research site on the Shadow Path of Aurora that didn't even register a line item in your reports? Captain, the only thing I've ever done is accomplish the missions you gave me. Nothing more, nothing less. Never concealed anything, or had any other interest but abundances at the forefront. This is unfair. I know what you've accomplished. Also know what he's saying. And even if he's not a fan of Technomancers, that alone wouldn't motivate him to make all this up to frame you. And the list of accusations and the details is long. Like your report on the deserters. Less truth than lies. Almost more lies than ink. Never would have expected it from you, Lieutenant. You flat out lied about Bulgakov! I can tolerate failure, Lieutenant, but lies are inexcusable! Do you take me for an idiot?! Captain, if I was in your shoes, I'd feel the same. But take a step back. All those missions you sent me on, all the success I brought back to you, Whatever the Colonel's after, it's not about my actions. There's got to be something else. I don't know, Lieutenant. I'm caught in the middle. And something in me feels there's more to it, too. Whether what he's saying is true or not, don't know what you did to piss him off. To make yourself his target, Technomancer or not. It's beyond me. Unfortunately, he's already called you in, and I can't stop it. All I can tell you is watch your mouth. 
Behave like the soldier you've been since you joined my company, and you'll come out just fine. I'll plead in your favor if it comes down to that. Let's just hope it doesn't. Get going. Colonel's waiting. Good luck. He is? Zachariah! I was scared we were too late! For what? What's going on? There's no time to talk about it. You're in danger. Victor called you in, didn't he? Yeah, wants to talk to me about- No, he doesn't. It's a trap. It's just an excuse to get you there so they can arrest you. They will do whatever necessary to make you talk. I don't know what you technomancers are hiding, but he's ready to do anything to find out. He's got power, but he wouldn't- Zack, listen to the girl. You stay away from that man. The crook, the, the, the pig- Thanks, Scott. You need to listen to us, Zachariah. I know it's hard to hear, but if you stay here, you're gonna die. Where would I even- We take a rover and go. The town's filled with ASC looking for you now, but I know a road that'll help us avoid most of the troops. Let's go, Zack. We need to go with the girl. No time to waste before that- that- that madman gets his hands on you. Now! For the last time, we're not here to damage the equipment. We're here to stop a terrorist. So get out of the way, now! Damn it, they're already here. Who the fuck do you think you are? It's my warehouse, you prick. If there was a terrorist here, I'm pretty sure I'd have seen his ass lurking around. So you're gonna, hey, make yourself at home. Lieutenant, sorry to ruin the surprise. But your little mission ends here. Stop. The traitor! No! Don't kill him! You, you're driving. Get us out of Ophir now. Bitch. Fine. Everyone in the rover. You okay, Zach? In one day. I find out Victor used everything I did as an officer against me, and I end up chased by my own people. Then one of my own soldiers turns out to be ASC, and I get involved in the armed robbery of a rover owned by my childhood corporation. Yeah, I'm doing okay, Misha. Surely the young lady would not be taking us to an imaginary city. I mean, rovers are amazing machines, but certainly they cannot transport one beyond the bounds of reality and reason. I am not keen on leaving abundance. Noctis is an amazing city, Scott. It's as real as Ophir, but more amazing than anything you've ever seen before. Oh, yes, yes, I'm sure. Full of fairies and... and... balderdash. Listen, Amelia, I'm sorry things went down the way they did. We didn't have a choice, though. The ASC after us and not a lot of time. Thanks for taking us wherever it is we're going. Thanks for the thanks, but it doesn't change the fact I still want to see your asshole head on a stake at some point. <laughs> Shit, look what that stupid creature did to my baby! The engine's fucked! How am I gonna repair this? You didn't even leave me spare parts! You really- An ostrich. No doubt about it, it's a wild ostrich. Look, you see the spikes on its back? Unfortunately, the poor animal died, but I'm almost sure that well, according to the sky, we don't have much time before sunrise. Fortunately, we're not very far away. We better get a move on. It's a pretty good idea, because as I was about to tell you, these creatures are social. They rarely travel alone. We might find ourselves in the middle of a herd, and an angry ostrich can be very dangerous. Very good. Want to guide us, Nisha? And Amelia, leave that rover alone. As you said, you won't be able to fix it. And if you stay, you'll die. Isn't that what that bitch wanted? That I die? I hate you all! Stop it! We never wanted you to die. We need you. I know that you love that machine, but there's no time to cry over it. Come on!
No, they're trying to open the roof. You, up there! Stop! Stop! It's Nisha! Listen to me! Stop! We'll take care of the creatures! I'm sorry, Nisha! I didn't... I'm stopping right now! But I'll only be able to open the doors for you once the area is completely secured! Nisha! I'm so glad to see you! We were starting to get worried about you. The news from Ophir sounded a little chaotic. You look healthy. Worried? About me? Give me some credit. Let me introduce you to Zachariah Manser. He's the reason why I'm here. Look at that! The Technomancer who saved us from the Vori! Interesting. Very interesting. <laughs> Happy to see you again. Now I understand why the Prince was insistent. He'll want to see you as soon as possible. The Prince? Dandolo. He rules our city. If I were you, I wouldn't keep him waiting. He loses patience quickly. There's nothing like fresh news for him to be on pins and needles. But don't worry. He's a charming man. And he loves Nisha. Very well. I'll go see him. Happy to see you in one piece, Zachariah. Beg? I feel like I got ripped off. Apologies. We were forced to improvise. Playing a simpleton is a great way to avoid attention when you are a mutant. You can go see the prince now, but come back later. There's something I would like to discuss. I will be near the sand sails. Wait up. Your name's Andrew, isn't it? We went to the academy together. But didn't we... I overheard you talking to Master Connor after I brought him to meet you. I guess you overheard. Very well. Come find me once you've met with the prince. We'll talk about it. Go now. Don't keep him waiting. Check the living against me. Ah, and here comes the rare pearl. The diamond in the rough that my Nisha tells me about. Come, young man. Zachariah Manser. I am... was a lieutenant in abundance. Then welcome to Noctus Labyrinthus, Zachariah Manser, former lieutenant of abundance. I am Dandolo, head of this fair city. Legendary city of the merchants. Apparently less legend than I thought, or been told. But hopefully as glorious as legends proclaim. Regardless, for all who come seeking asylum, it opens its arms to you and your companions. You are free to call it home. Like all who have come before you, you will honor our only request, that you make yourselves useful to our city. I'm sure your skills will place you in high demand. Noctis's first Technomancer. Exciting. You'll have all the help you need with Nisha and Lucky, who I believe you've met. We'll give you a room to get some rest. I hear your trip was quite eventful. There is something else. I would like to personally discuss my expectations of you. You hear? War between Abundance and Aurora's winding down. Aurora took Green Hope. You just left Ophir a few hours ago and didn't hear anything about that. That really surprise you? Your little censorship office probably hasn't decided what to do with the information yet. No, no. Don't look at me like that. You don't belong to Abundance anymore. The truce doesn't behoove us. During peace, the corporations become more suspicious of us and our business suffers. Our city could even be discovered, which would be catastrophic. In legend, it must remain. What are you... No, no, let me speak. Your welcome here comes at a price. I want you to attack an Aurora convoy. It's right up your alley. And why would I do that? I didn't finish. You will do it in abundance uniforms, dissolving the truce. Do what you want with the soldiers, but let the civilians live. They need to be witnesses that will report back to Aurora. So you keep the war going? Precisely. And while you're at it, bring back the uniforms of the Aurora Technomancers you dispatch. I'm sure I'll find a use for them down the road. Ah, another thing, much more trivial this time, I assure you. The rover you came in on, I'd like you to move it. Put it wherever you want, do whatever you want with it. Just make sure it's not in the way, in the canyon. I just don't want to fear to stumble over the machine and, as a result, find the road that leads here. Yeah, I'll see what I can do. Oh yes, one last thing. My spies gave me a little tidbit that might interest you. 
Right after your escape, the ASC arrested your Technomancer brothers, that's what you call them, right? From Ophir. Their fate's uncertain, but if I was you, I'd be worried for them. If you're worried enough to want to help them, maybe we can set up some sand sails to get you back. Then your help comes at what cost, assuming it's not out of the kindness of your heart. Don't be so bitter, Zachariah. Business is business, not personal. I just thought, a few Technomancers on our side might be useful. You want to attack a convoy to reignite a war? You know how many people die in those wars? How many are mutilated? Taken prisoner? Not precisely. But I think I have a clear idea of the numbers, yeah. Every battle has its purpose, Zachariah Manser. Abundance has fought Aurora for years for more power. Out of idealism that their philosophies are more righteous than Aurora's. We don't just fight the corporations because of their damned ideals. What we do, we do for our survival. For the survival of the misfits of Mars, the rejected, the poor, the outcasts of corporations. We fight for those who find a home with us, those I promised to protect. This mission worries you, and I get that. I do. Which is why I'm not asking you to attack your old brothers in arms. But rather just carry out the same attacks you did countless times before, under different command. I don't know how I can move the rover. Pretty damaged. I'm sure you can find a way to move it up here. Not sure sand sails can help, but maybe you can couple it to some ostriches. Maybe your explorer friend didn't tell you, but some corporations would start a war to own such a machine. I'd repair it if I were you. Hell, sell it if you don't think you'll ever need it. I'll be honest, though. Rovers offer freedom no other transportation does. Word is, they can even reach the North and South Poles. Just something to think about. How'd you find out about my brother so quickly? Well, besides the fact that your accident and eventful arrival slowed you down, my messenger's sand sails make up in speed what they lack in protection. And of course, the arrests of Abundance's most powerful strike forces were worthy of dispatching agents to keep an eye on the situation. You haven't even given a thought to how this disrupts the current balance of forces, have you? You know why they were arrested? The official statement is that they were suspected of treason. Victor's pretext, I'm sure. He's a man who hates anything not under his control, was probably planning this for quite a while. He didn't get what he wanted going at it indirectly, so he just took it head on. Whatever hope you have for their lives, I'd start to come to terms. They're probably being tortured for their secrets as we speak. And as soon as they give them up, they'll be executed. If you care about them, What do you know about Aurora? A young corporation. Aggressive, inventive, less backward than Abundance. And right now, it's going through many changes. During the war, a man named Wisdom became its dowser. And because of him, Technomancers, who had been kept from power for so long, now have quite a bit of influence, religious and political. No one knows what'll come of it, though. Only thing we know is that his alliance with the Popular Unions, which helped win a lot of battles, including the one over Greenhope, looks like it's become pretty fragile. And I admit I am concerned that this will all lead to another bloodbath. It's just my concern, and I'm not always right, but I'm also rarely wrong. What can you tell me about abundance? More than others, probably, because I see it all from the outside. And what I see isn't tainted by any loyalty to a mother country. Every last bit of it is harsh, from its structure to its hierarchy. And trust me, it's gonna topple one day. The administration's unending power leads to unending corruption, which keeps the Vori fed and keeps the control where it is. The plan is to stifle any bright young things in the corporation that might hope for promotion. Zachariah, we have two possible outcomes. One, Victor seizes power, Abundance survives, and crushes its own citizens beneath its boots. 
or two, abundance finds a way to evolve and liberate itself from its current ways of thinking. The type of regime there now, though, can only survive with an equally powerful leader. Something Victor understands. I see your mutants walk around free here. They welcome, too? And why wouldn't they be? They're the future of our planet, Zachariah. Though I'm sure that makes little sense to someone who grew up in a corporation that treats them like they are a lesser people. They work hard. They're excellent guides and artisans, perfect spies. And for me, key commercial partners for Noctis. It may be a surprise to you to learn that they hope to form a mutant nation someday. And I believe they have that right. So I've been supporting them with whatever meager means at my disposal. What are your thoughts on the ASC? The cornerstone of Victor's dubious ascent to power. You want to deal with abundance, you need to go through the ASC. You think Victor's out to control abundance? Out to? No, 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 he already does. Didn't your Technomancer friend's arrest prove that? A dowser to boot, dowsers, the assembly, whoever, all pawns to be sacrificed, or puppets to be manipulated in his games of blackmail, played with the secrets he's collected on everyone. He's brilliant, merciless, a master manipulator who's turned nearly every citizen into one of his agents, all without raising suspicion. Most in abundance work for ASC ambitions, while those who don't will soon disappear. What's the word on Anton Rogue? A bastard like no other. My worst enemy and biggest threat. I've done my damnedest to make sure my existence, like this city, is little more than a vague rumor. Anton Rogue, though, knows damn well that me and this city are real. Just doesn't know where to find us. At least I hope not. His big business competition hopes to push the power of his organization into every corporation. And what better way for him to do it than through us? I do what I can to prevent him from reaching us, but he's not a man who quits till he gets what he wants. Then why even try to stop him? It's just business, right? Eh, true enough. But his methods aren't good for my business, or yours. He's a product of the Abundance Regime, and because of that, he only knows terror and violence as his tools. I prefer, well, more tactical methods. What can you tell me about the Caravansary neighborhood? It's the Pulse of Noctis. The very first place built by traveling merchants. Built in the recesses of the labyrinth so they'd have a place to meet, trade, rest, drop their loads. Then the city exploded as it opened itself up to all those who were homeless elsewhere. And the simple building it once was became the beautiful palace it is today. It's still the place for merchants to gather, trade, swap tips and news, and get some rest. It's also become the home for the merchant prince, the elected chief of all traveling merchants. What's the gate neighborhood? It's the neighborhood around the city's current entrance, much less affluent than the heart of the city, and it keeps growing and getting better. Usually the first place newcomers tend to plant their roots. They'll go and dig or build their house where they can find space. A damn lively area, eclectic, and sometimes those differences, combined with the proximity of the canyon, can make it a bit dangerous. But we do our best to keep it safe. Try to find ways to bring the different communities together, rather than allow their division to fester. Why'd you pick the canyons to build your city? Who knows? That decision was made by people a century ago. But if you're asking my opinion, the canyons serve a dual purpose, providing transit and partial shade from the sun. I don't know if you know, but they connect us all over, even to the big cities, and they serve as natural protection, making it hard to find us without a guide. They're our shadow paths, our roof and our ramparts, all thanks to nature. On my way in, I saw a large area with a bunch of sailing machines. 
Ah, yes, the loading zone, where we store, empty, and fix our vehicles when they need it. All the merchandise that comes in gets sorted there, too, before getting redirected to the various city neighborhoods. It's a rather key area for the city. Without the sand sails, we'd have a damn difficult time getting our merch out to all the cities. Of course, we can't use them everywhere, and often use other means of transport, like the Shadow Path, or ostriches. But those machines, as you call them, do the bulk of the heavy lifting. It's our fleet, and we're damn proud of it, too.